Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I thought that I would just share some new recipes that I have been trying out or just good ones that I have been making for a while and I really enjoy and just kind of inspire you to go and cook something fun, you know? Without further ado, let's get into it. Here are six vegan recipes that you should definitely try from time to time. Enjoy the video. So today we're going to be trying out this just egg that my sister recently found at the grocery store recently as in this morning and I am super excited to try it. I've been looking for this all over the place. I've been to Kroger, I've been to Target, I've been to multiple Walmarts and I have not seen it anywhere but my sister did find it so I'm super excited to finally try it. I haven't had any eggs in almost a year and a half so I'm not sure what I'm going to compare this to. It looks kind of fun. I've heard great reviews about it and the graphic design, my goodness. I'm gonna pour it onto a pan and see what happens. I'm also going to toast a little bit of this dark pump, pumpernickel bread. I've recently been so obsessed with pumpernickel. It's super fun. Okay, ladies and gents. So like I said, it's time to get that frying pan out. Make sure to cover it in a hefty load of butter. I am using Earth Balance. Before we start pouring our egg, make sure that you have all your spices ready because no one likes an unseasoned egg. As you can see here, I am a very spice-oriented gal. So this is what it looks like. Honestly, it smells kind of weird, but here we go. I am going to season my egg with paprika, garlic, salt, and peppercorns. Here's a close-up shot of the egg because it just so happens that it's not very gorgeous. Last but not least, I am going to add a bit of roasted onions and adobo. To put together my sandwich, I buttered the dark pump, melted a bit of vegan daya cheddar, and served the scrambled egg on top. I topped everything off with spinach so it would look a bit more cheerful and voila! There you have it, a vegan scrambled egg sandwich. This next recipe is one that we tend to make probably twice or even three times per week. We are going to be making a stir fry. I really love making these because it's a great source of vegetables and it always tastes fantastic. In order to make this, I am going to slice several vegetables, starting with a bell pepper and a white onion. We always start with the vegetables that need to sit in the pan for the longest time, so basically anything hard or dense. I am also going to chop up two large carrots, and a portobello mushroom. Next, you're going to want to heat up some olive oil on a skillet and toss everything in that you have chopped and sliced. Meanwhile, I'm going to slice this zucchini. We like when the zucchini is a bit al dente, so I'm not really in a rush to get it into the pan. Following that, we have a can of water chestnuts. I really love these. They're probably one of my favorite stir-fry ingredients. I think they really complete the whole dish. Once I toss the chestnuts and the zucchini slices into the pan, I am going to dice some garlic cloves for our noodles. We seasoned a pan with said garlic and some roasted onions and added the boiled noodles. I tossed a handful of spinach into the pot with the vegetables, and meanwhile my sister seasoned the noodles with sesame seeds and other spices. The last ingredient that we added to the stir fry were these Gardein plant-based chicken strips. We really like this brand, we found this particular product at Kroger. And then our stir fry was ready to serve. We combined our fried noodles with the veggies and there you have it, an absolutely glorious meal. Oh, 
this recipe is probably one of the simpler ones. My sister and I will be making some blueberry pancakes slash waffles. The first thing that you're going to need is one and three fourth cups of milk. I use Chobani vanilla oat milk. It's one of my favorites. I am going to combine the milk with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and set it aside so it will curdle. In a separate bowl, I am going to combine one cup of flour with a bit of baking powder. Remember to sift it to avoid clumps. Once the milk finishes curdling, I will add it to the dry ingredients along with half a cup of avocado oil and one third cup of light brown sugar. Mix that a bit and then add a bit of vanilla yogurt. We prefer to add vanilla yogurt rather than flax eggs. It works pretty much the same if not better. We started ladling the batter onto the waffle maker, but it was taking quite a bit of time for them to form and we were very hungry, so we used a part of the batter to make pancakes. We managed to make the pancakes much more quicker. They turned out super delicious, courtesy of the yogurt and oat milk. It's safe to say that this was one of the prettier batches of pancakes that we've made in a while. A recipe that I am going to be showing you today is cauliflower wings. These are pretty simple and a really fun way to eat a whole head of cauliflower by yourself in a matter of a single sitting. What you're going to need is a head of cauliflower. You're going to want to chop it up into small bite-sized pieces like so. Once you do that, you can move on to making the coating. To make the coating, I am going to combine 3 fourths of a cup of flour with 1 cup of water. Season it to taste. I used garlic, salt, paprika, and roasted onions. We're going to be making a glaze later on, so fret not, your seasoning abilities don't have to be put to the test quite so soon. Preheat your oven to 425 and crush up some tortilla chips, unless you want to use breadcrumbs. That's reasonable, I guess. This is the dipping process. First, you dip your cauliflower in the flour mixture, then toss it with the tortilla crumbs, and then place it on an oiled pan. Repeat this process and then bake them for around 20 minutes on each side. While the cauliflower bakes, we're going to take a few sauces and combine them to make a glaze. I'm going to combine lemongrass chili hoisin sauce, hot sauce, blue agave, and a tablespoon of butter in a saucepan. Put the sauce pan overheat and stir until all of the ingredients are combined. Add extra sauce to taste. Once the oven timer goes off, I'm going to take these precious vegan wings out of the oven and let them cool a bit. You can toss your cauliflower with the glaze or just dip it. I prefer dipping it because the wings are less likely to fall apart. And there you have it. Your wings are ready to be devoured. Bon apple teeth. To celebrate an incredibly special occasion, my sister's 19th birthday, she and I decided to make her favorite dessert, tiramisu. I was in charge of my favorite part, the mascarpone. I opened up a can of cashews and measured one and a half cups of them. I tossed those into a bowl and heated up water in a kettle. You're going to want to soak these cashews for about 10 minutes so they become softer and easier to work with. Meanwhile, I opened a fresh container of coconut oil and scooped out about five tablespoons. I microwaved it for half a minute so it would melt. Once the coconut oil was melted, I poured it into a Ninja blender, along with half a cup of oat milk. The cashews had finished soaking, so I drained them and added them to the blender as well. Next, I added one third cup of maple syrup and a squirt of lemon juice. My favorite part is right before I mix all of the ingredients. I really love seeing how all the layers look separately. I'm going to mix the mascarpone and set it aside. Now it's time for the coconut milk. The night before, I refrigerated several cans of coconut milk so the fat would set and we could add it to the mascarpone. Unfortunately, after I opened the cans, which was such a struggle, I realized that the cans were reduced fat. The single most important part of the can literally wasn't there. Fortunately, we had another can. This one was full fat. I used all that I could dig out, but it still wasn't enough. So I took a container of tofuti, which is a vegan cream cheese, and added about half of it to make up for the lost fat. R.I.P. fat, or lack thereof. The tofuti turned out to be a great substitute, so all was not lost. 
I whisked the coconut fat with two tablespoons of powdered sugar. I then poured the Ninja Blender cashew mixture into the coconut fat. Do not, do not, I repeat, do not use a whisk for this part. I did so in a previous tiramisu and it turned out kind of flat. You're going to want to use a spatula to combine the two mixtures together. Once the two parts are combined, I'm going to set the mascarpone aside to cool while we make the lady fingers. To make the lady fingers, we took six tablespoons of vegan butter and whisk those with three-fourths of a cup of sugar. In a separate bowl, my sister combined one and a half cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Slowly, we whisked together the dry ingredients with the butter and the sugar. Next, I opened up a can of garbanzo and added one fourth cup of aquafaba into the mixture, which is the liquid in the can of garbanzo. We also added one fourth cup of oat milk. My sister filled a plastic bag with the batter and we sprayed a cookie pan with some avocado oil. She cut a hole in the bag and made the lady fingers. She is literally a pro at this. We put the cookies in the oven and baked them at 350 for 14 minutes. While they baked, we decided to make the soaking liquid for the lady fingers. I combined three tablespoons of rum with half a cup of water and a freshly made shot of espresso, courtesy of my sister. 14 minutes later, the lady fingers were golden and ready to take out of the oven. Once they cooled, it was time for assembly. To assemble the tiramisu, we spread a layer of mascarpone followed by a layer of soaked lady fingers, then the mascarpone and the lady fingers again. We repeated these layers and until we ran out of mascarpone. In order for the tiramisu to set, you're going to have to refrigerate it overnight. 24 hours later, we sifted some cocoa onto the tiramisu, cut into it, stuck several birthday candles in it, celebrated my sister's 19th trip around the world, and devoured the whole tiramisu. And that's the recipe. The next meal idea that I am going to share with you is this vegan chicken avocado sandwich. It's perfect for lunch or dinner, and it's probably one of the better sandwiches that I have made recently. I am going to be using Boca spicy chicken veggie patties. They are probably the most chicken-like vegan patties that I've ever had. We will be making two sandwiches, one for myself and one for my sister. I am going to heat up some olive oil and place the patties on the pan like so. Next, to make the guac, we're just going to scoop out an avocado and season it to taste. We like to add hot sauce, garlic, salt, and roasted onions. Back to the patties. We're going to flip them after a few minutes and place a slice of vegan daya cheddar on each. Cover the pan in order for the cheese to melt. The next step is, you guessed it, toast some pumpernickel. I chose to use this artichoke hummus as a base for my sandwich. Then place your veggie patty on your bread, add a hefty amount of spinach, I spread some guac on the other piece of pumpernickel, and close that bad boy. And voila! That's my chicken sandwich. Basically a bougie vegan version of a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Thank you so much for watching this video and tuning in and just hearing me talk about recipes for 12 minutes straight. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next one.